Welcome guys to another YouTube video of Chibi No Podcast. This is me, David the Smash Fan. Smash your tech guy. Mr. Mr. And today we are going to go and finally talk in full detail about Avengers Endgame. Now, I did the initial review right after the movie because unfortunately we weren't, we weren't able to see the movie together um, about, uh, about Avengers Endgame with Hipster Paul. Um, talked a little bit about that, and in, in this one, we want to go a lot more in detail of, and basically go act act per act. And also, um, what we're going to be doing later uh, as the week goes by, we're going to be releasing videos of uh, the ending arcs of the original Avengers because a lot of their contracts are done. Some of them apparently aren't, uh, according to the end of the movie and what's going on. But we're going to go into those and go in specific on those later on. Uh, but first, let's. Let's talk about the first arc, okay? Because the first arc is probably the the slowest part, but I think there's a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of great stuff happening in there, and I, I won't go chronologically like timeline what's going on. But one of the things I really liked about the first act was when Tony gets back, um, is brought back with him and uh, and Nebula, and he has this such this strong animosity still towards uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers, like even more than it was in Civil War. Like and you see Tony all deteriorated. Like he's old. Like he's he's weak. He has like no mass on his body, and he's like infuriated at Captain at Captain America. I, I love that. I think that was one of the best. I think one of the best parts in the in the first half because it just showed it just showed that this wasn't gonna start off as okay. We we defeated. We got band together. That was my favorite part about the about the first act. I don't know about you guys. What what part you liked? I, I know you said it was kind of slow. Uh, there was building stuff, but what parts did you like the most about the first act? Um, so I'll I'll go real quick first before getting into that. I think the the building part was needed so that we can understand things and how they would go about throughout the movie. So I'm I'm totally fine with that because it wasn't boring. It was just kind of long to me, and I like that. It, it made so that we know what to go through throughout the whole movie. Okay, just getting that out of the way, that's what it was. Um, the ones I did like was just showing the repercussions of the snap. So, like, um, when Cap is going to that, I guess, like like an AA type of meeting for people, like like a support group, I meant, not AA, yeah. but a support group, and he's there for people consoling them because he's Captain America. He's there for the people. And I liked, I liked how he was trying to be there for them, which um, really, I liked it because, he, because he's just a really good guy. Um, and the second part was seeing um, what's it, Ant Man, when he comes out of the uh, the quantum, uh, quantum realm. realm, and he's f- trying to figure out what's going on, and he finds out that his daughter is like five. It's five years later, and she's a teenager, and he's just kind of like he really he realizes what he missed out, and he's just really sad and distraught, and he's in pain, you know. But you can't, you can't change that. So yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, Miles. Um. So my favorite part of it was actually, I mean, I guess just a quick note. I really did like when Ant-Man asked the, the kid what happened here, and you kind of see, like, the apocalyptic view. That was really cool scenery they added to it. Uh, my favorite part was actually with um, Hawkeye when he goes to the barn real quick and then comes back and his whole family's gone. I remember being with Jose, and we both saw each other, and we're like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> that was harsh. Oh, yeah. And, that uh, yeah, that ahead, scene was just so beautifully well done. Um I am going to be honest, so guys, the first act of this movie was very boring to me after a while. I liked the intro of the, the negative and, you know, seeing what happened. But to me, it went on a little too long where my eyes were starting to do the closure. And even on, uh, even Jose was asking, like, is something going to happen soon? I liked the character development, but it was a little too long for my taste, to be honest. I did like the setup. I just felt it dragged a little too much for my personal taste. But I think the best part for me was, was I, mean, I like the start thing, like you said. I kind of like that part when they're doing the the paper football. That was a really cool <laughs> yeah. scene, um, especially the interaction with Nebula because she's so harsh. <laughs> but uh, and the, it was a beautiful moment when uh, Tony was talking into the – doing the recording. I love the words he picked for that. Um, that was great. But, yeah, I think my favorite part was the Hawkeye moment. That was just like, damn. I just really, really like that part. Did you guys think that Thanos would be killed that quickly? No. No. Um yeah i was like i was super shocked because i was like what what's going on you know and um like because the whole point of the trailers that we got was like they're getting ready to go to thanos and so like everything kind of like put me in shock and i'm like what's gonna happen here but then obviously when we think about the quantum realm I'm like okay there's gotta be something there 
I love it, the it was line. a shocker at first. That's what it was. I love that line too when he said uh, to Thanos, he's like, what'd you do? And he's like, I aim for the head. Like that was just really savage because that's that moment Thor really didn't get, you know, because he was going to take him out, but he wanted to show him like, hey, I got victory when you thought I, I would lose to you, you know, in an Infinity War. And this time and now he finally just says, screw it. I'm not going to get that satisfying thing. I'm just going to take the damn head off just to show like his passion. And, you know, I, I, that was really cool to me how they kind of finished him. One thing that I liked is they did, again, they did a lot of nods to the comic books of, of, of you know, the Infinity Gauntlet and, one that they had him that Thanos wore the exact same mm. um, uh, shirt and and pants that he had at the end of the actual comic book when he's just farming. So that, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So I mean, if you didn't read the comic book, that yeah, that <coughs> those are cool little nods of of them showing. Yeah, we got this reference from the we got these from the comic books. We know people like it, so let's let's go into that and we'll talk about more Easter eggs um, that happened because the second act is what we're gonna go into now, which have tons of craziness happened so second act um this is the part where it's five years later which i again love the time skip and they want they find that there's a possible a possibility of bringing everyone back through time travel and this is where we get introduced to like professor hulk um we and we get we see tony's <laughs> brilliance of how to do time travel through the quantum realm which is it's funny because like you you there's a there's a little thing that is said in um, by Rocket, where he says like you're, you're the smartest person like on this planet, because uh, he because Tony was like kind of bossing him around, but it's like but he never did anything about quantum realms. He never did anything to to do a time travel. It's just a fun little thing of how he's how Rocket is still trying to be condescending, um, even though Tony was the one that found out this you know time travel that no one else ever had had ever done. So let's talk about let's talk about the time travel aspect. The of Dragon this. Ball Z time travel. So we are going to talk about that because <laughs> because so, so let's let's let, let's point out what Scott thought time travel was. It's he thought that it was like Back to the Future, that which is um, bullshit now. Yeah, it's like, it's like <laughs> butterfly. They thought butterfly effect. If something happens in the past, then there's going to be ripple effects and it's going to affect the future. But Professor Hulk said, "Nope. If we go, we can't change the past. The past is fixed. If we go back in time to get all these stuff uh, to get the stones." it will affect or will change a branch of the timeline that we're on. So there will be multiple timelines or multiple branches, ergo multiverse. So, and that's how it will work. Um, and, and the ancient one also confirmed that when Professor Hulk went, went back to try and get the, the time stone. So um, in this act, it, it's all about time travel. Now, here's my question to you because I want to ask a question. Do you, did you like all the... All the times going back to the to this to the to different points in time from the movies. Did you like that they they did that, or did you feel like maybe it was a little bit of a uh, maybe lazy? I want to hear your opinion about the whole of, of the whole time travel, how to get the stones. Uh, Diego, do you want to go first? You go first. I need to think about it. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I've I've had a lot of time to think about this particular one. Um. Uh, time travel is so complicated obviously and there's going to be some you know plot holes and all that kind of stuff and i just have to remember it's a comic book movie so on that aspect if we're just having fun with it i really like them going back to a lot of the original avenger scenes especially uh when they're in new york because i know we theorized on a couple of that too because we knew that they were filming in new york and it's like oh i bet they're going to do time travel and go back to the original you know avenger thing and they, they did and that was so cool to see the different aspects when they're sneaking around and some of the little slight jokes they do and and especially that part I really loved was when the uh, you see the Hulk come and he just smashes that guy in the car and then he just keeps smashing and smashing the car and he just looks at them afterwards and he's just like or he's just like Mark he's Ruffalo looks at the cats it's like uh yeah that was so great because that was back in the time when he didn't really have control of the Hulk <laughs> but anyway I love those aspects it was it was really fun um, the Captain America fight scene was that also part in the New York or was that a yeah, different yeah that was place? in New York that was a when great scene. I, I that was say, awesome. This, this. Although I think he should have lost personally. <laughs> well, he won because he said Bucky's alive. That's the only reason why. But, I get, okay, I get, you got a point. <laughs> but here, here's a great thing. Okay, that I, again, the Russo brothers loved putting all these Easter eggs in, in from the comic books, and the biggest one that he did that I freaked out. And there was a lot of people in the, in the, in the theater that they freaked out, but I, they didn't freak out of the reason of why. I did, and why like other people who I know oh, read the comic books did. They did. They, you no, you can tell. No, you can tell. Anyway, so the part where he goes in the elevator and it mimics the exact same scene <laughs> in the Winter Soldier when he's about to like attack them all, 
Um, and in this one, he goes to to the to the main. I forget his name, and he goes, "Hail Hydra!" And <laughs> the best part about this is because a few years ago, there was a huge controversy where in the comic books, it was revealed that Captain America was actually a Hydra agent, or that he. You'll find out find a little exactly how that happened, but I remember at the end of that first volume, they're like, "What are you doing?" And Ca- and Captain America turns around and says, "Hail Hydra!" And he walks, um, and people freaked out. They freaked out in our theater in the, too. In the com- in the when the comic book people freaked out, they were like pissed. And this one, people were like, "Oh, that's awesome! You never heard Captain America." But I know a lot of people don't know. Maybe never read that. But that was freaking awesome. I loved how they put that little Easter egg in there, and and the whole thing about America's ass. <laughs> that was awesome. No, no. That's America? definitely America's ass. No, because like Tony's, like, <laughs> Tony's like Tony's like Tony's like no, that's not. It's like that. He's like that suit doesn't do anything for you. <laughs> <laughs> that part was hilarious. All right, Mr. Missy, yeah, you've been quiet. Tell me, tell me something. You had time to uh, to think. Um, so you're asking me if that bothered me with all any of that stuff? Not bother you, First. but like, but what did you think of the time travel of the time traveling aspect of going to different parts in uh, from the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Did you like it? Did you not like it? And uh, what I was your favorite it. part? Um, of obviously. Uh, it was very it's 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 it was for fan service in the sense of like you want to go see all this stuff and they want to get you hyped for it so i was totally okay with that and there was no issues on my end for those things um i think they planned it out played it out pretty well like how everything should go i like how nothing not, not, it felt i liked how um nothing turned out how they planned it you know like um loki getting the tesseract and leaving um uh hulk having to persuade the uh, ancient one saying like you know uh dr strange was the one who, who gave up the time stone you know and she and the whole discussion between her and and bruce saying like if you take it then there's gonna be a a, a branch on our time that's gonna mess it up he's like but if i put it back everything will go back to normal i like that conversation between the two of them i like that too it was, yeah. it was cool i liked it like very fan servicey in the best way and i enjoyed the hell out of it if I can add, add something to that, Dave, that's okay. Sure. I was just going to say, with I, I liked that they made the time... I mean, I like the, the Back to the Future timeline, you know, you go correct the past. I like those ones, too. But having more of a linear path where, like, you know, just you can't go and change the past. You, you, what's been done in the present is done. You can't change that. I like that because it added that... We always uh, okay. I always kind of theorize. I'm like they're gonna have to go back in time, but to just be able to know they're gonna go back in time and they can fix the history in their own timeline, like that was theory, I was worried about because then it kind of gets rid of like it, it makes Infinity War like not as dire. The consequences weren't as severe, right? But to know that you can't fix your own timeline, what has happened has happened. I like that they made that the timeline way because then it adds more of like this happened. It is bad. We're gonna try and rectify it, but in the only way we can in this type of um 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 how do i say this uh like going back to the future like the time and stuff i, I just like how they did like this kind of version right yes so to to end it off before going to the final act um black widow her her dying because we know that once they they said the teams of who's going to get the soul stone you knew one of them wasn't coming back my and so what was the impact of that because I actually, so her actually dying that that early was shocking to me because I thought she was going to at least make it to the end if she was going to die. I actually thought uh, Clinton was going to be the one to die. But I really loved their, they're like, oh, yeah, it has to be me. They're like, no, it has to be me. And, like, they fought to die for for everyone. So I thought that was a really interesting, um, uh, an interesting fight. And uh, I think it was a great reflection of their of their friendship and how much they care for not just for each other but for everyone else uh because of how they were before and uh I, but it's still like I, I guess the death itself didn't really like shock me as other people did like how what did that do like how about you how did you feel about her being the sacrifice um, i'll go there you go uh, you go first i didn't care i mean i mean <laughs> it sucked that she did die like um, that in general that does suck but it was like well somebody i i knew because it was like okay someone's gonna die from the soul stone but I didn't really care for Hawkeye or Black Widow, so it was just like, who are they gonna choose? You know, um, that's how I went about it. Um, I, look, me thinking was like, well, I don't think it would be fair for Hawkeye to die when he has a family, whereas Black Widow doesn't really have bloodline anybody, but her, the Avengers are her family, so 
when she says i want to do it for you guys like she wants to kill herself for them because that's her family i was like okay i get it that's cool that makes me happy for that but i wasn't like like i said i wasn't devastated okay so i know we're skipping through a lot of things but we're gonna cover them in other videos so by the way, this is for people who have watched this, so you'll understand what we're talking about. You don't need to be like, what's going on? I'm not. <laughs> no, they well, already... They're this far in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, there's some people, you know. Okay, the final the final act, the third act. So, to preface, just timeline, what's going on. The Asylums from another timeline from 2014 it gets wind of what the Avengers are doing, and he gets brought to the future timeline because of the other Nebula, uh, and we'll go into much more so after after the Hulk had done the snap to undo the decimation. So now we have Thanos bringing his entire well, not I don't think his entire army, but almost his entire army to fight the Avengers. So this is the fight to end all fights. This is the fight where I personally got teary eyed and was about to cry. I actually did cry. I cried because it was emotional, and it's not. And I'll say this much: it wasn't the deaths. It was when you hear Sam over Captain America's calm, and he's like, Cap, Cap, you there. And then Doctor Strange opens up all those portals, and everyone starts coming out. And then the part that, that made my heart sing, two parts, was when you finally see Spider-Man come through. I was, I, was, I was on tears. I was like, oh my gosh, I, he's back, and you see Tony looking at him. And then, at the, and then after everyone comes out of the portals, and then you hear the lines, we've been waiting 11 years for Captain America to say, which was <laughs> Avengers Assemble, and they filed it. Like, ah! awesome. The part when Tony gave Peter a hug, that really hit my throat really hard. And then just Peter's just like, oh, oh, this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> that that to me really emotionally hit me really hard. Like that that one I got really choked up in my throat. That hit me hard. Yeah, I think I think it in almost like I, I don't think five or ten minutes went by without someone cheering at one point because they they gave us so many uh, different um, com like uh, combinations of people <laughs> fighting. We got different uh, we got different uh, fights between Thanos and different Avengers, and uh, just different things that we didn't even see coming. Like one thing that I did not see coming, which I was uh, I was flabbergasted. And I was like, Whoa! was when you saw uh, when you saw uh, Pepper Potts come through as as what's her name? Res Service safety. safety. Right. And I was like, oh, that's it, because you saw her helmet way back in the beginning. And Tony Sanic, she never likes to wear the stuff I buy her. And then she's on there. I was like, <laughs> oh, that was sick. And them teaming up she, and fighting. Oh. Wasn't it like a blue and gold suit? I, I, I don't know if it was gold. I thought blue, it was silver. silver. Blue, silver with some gold accents. Cause I know it was her, beautiful. Her, her helmet was gold because when uh, Tony's daughter took the helmet. That's was... right. That's why I'm thinking that. I just thought it reminded me almost of a, regardless of what you think of the game. But it reminded me of an anthem. Of anthem? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, javelins. Suit, the javelins. Yep. Yeah, but that, 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 those, that, all the fights were cool, and probably the one of the biggest you uh, things that up. we saw. Oh, there's tons of things that we can bring up. Tons of stuff <laughs> has to be when Thor is about to get killed. And, That's the one. And then you see uh, Captain America, and he picks up Thor's hammer, and Thor's like, "I knew it," and he starts, <laughs> and he starts, <laughs> and he starts. And he starts just going off on Thanos, but here's the thing that I liked, and because when I when I when when I was watching this, I'm like I kept thinking, you know, I hope they don't overpower Cap, that they make it look like he can, even though he's using the hammer and he's <coughs> using his shield, he still <coughs> should not be able to win against him. And like you saw crazy combos of him using throwing the shield, throwing the hammer that hits the shield that hits the back of Thanos, and doing that all these cool. hits. But I liked how it was. It only took one hit, and and Captain America was down. Like then he had to like yeah. he had to like gather himself up, kind of get back up and try fighting again. And that once the hammer was gone, even his shield couldn't do much. Like Thanos broke the vibranium shield. Like I I loved how they made that they didn't overpower Cap because they've done that a few times in that in the movies that didn't like him. This one they didn't, and that and I love that. But uh, but going uh, but talking about you know Captain America here with the hammer. I already know your reaction, but tell me, tell me your reaction. What were your thoughts going on when you saw? Did you expect that to happen? No, I totally forgot about that thing in the comics. But when it um, when it switched back, I was just screaming like a little girl. I thought it was dope because like I was curious as to why Thor took Mjolnir from the other timeline. So I was trying to figure out what they were doing. 
um i thought it was pretty dope so i, th- I was like this is sick I think one of the best comedy lines was in there too when uh, they both have the weapons and he just looks at Captain Mary's like, no, you can have the one. Oh, you have the small one, yeah. <laughs> you the small one. It reminded me like the man back scene with the little cricket, but it was just, you can know, have the small one. I was laughing so hard to that. You know, if I can bring it up because you guys know how much I, I love this character, but can we just talk a sec about Scarlet Witch, my waifu? Oh, freak. She. Oh my god. Go you you go talk, Miles, because you're that's, oh sorry. That's your wife. Sorry. No go no go. You deserve it. Go. That part because as you guys know, she was like one of my favorite. Infinity War. Yeah. Dude. Am yeah. I cutting out? Is that just don't go too. Just don't go too loud. Like you're getting too hype, and your mic's probably cutting you out. Just, Is that better? Yeah, you're fine. Just don't go too hype. <laughs> okay. No. Anyway, uh, that fight scene was just really cool. Lightning power she had, and she was like one-shotting Thanos a lot of the times but uh I just like that part when he's like she's like um I don't remember what she comments to him but he's like I don't even know you she's like oh you will like it was just cool to see her get her revenge with like the vision and everything like that part I was freaking out anyway she she said you said you took everything from me and he's thank you yeah I don't even know you and here's here's the thing though and I love that they showed how strong she really is because she would have killed Thanos her power alone was enough to kill Thanos and I mean, she was able to hold Thanos with one arm in mm-hmm. Infinity War, like, like she is immensely powerful. She's one of the strongest ones, if not one of the strongest, because she she does become really strong, like in the comic books. I don't know what they'll do with the series that she has with the Vision, which again is a whole other thing. I don't know what they're gonna do with, but um, going into the 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 climax of this battle was when. They're trying to get the the Infinity Gauntlet that Iron Man made to the Quantum Realm so they can send them all back. Um, we have Brie Larson here, uh, Brie Larson, uh, Captain Marvel fighting, and you see her fighting. Um, it was pretty powerful, and, and Thanos again is really smart because he he still does, he doesn't know how to use the the Infinity Gauntlet. He doesn't know how to use all of them like the other Thanos had some time, so he knew how to use each uh, each stone individually while you while while wielding the gauntlet. But he did. But this Thanos did it, and I'm glad they they used that. And so what he did is he took out the Power Stone, put it in his hand, and then punched Captain Marvel, which I thought was awesome, and destroyed the the van. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And then so we get to the to the final final act here, uh, where he has the gauntlet, and here's here's one thing that I really liked, and I, and I don't, and here's I I tried to think about this and find out what would have changed. Uh, and this goes back to what Doctor Strange had because when Doctor Strange comes back, Tony asks him, "Is this the future that you saw of the 14 million? Is this the one that we win?" And he says, "Like if mm. I tell you, I don't know if it will happen." Or, or he asks, "Like what do we need to do, or something like that?" And he says, "If I tell you, I don't know. Uh, I can't." No, if, if I tell it, you, it won't happen. It won't happen. So, the question. So the thing is, like, we know that Tony, way before in the movie, said he has a lot on at at stake here. He doesn't. He doesn't want he he wants to come out of this alive and he can't afford to lose his family. So, what's interesting is like you think that him knowing that that's the only way that they could win that he might do it, but it was not knowing and him acting on impulse to take the stones. And again, that might be it that he, to take the stones that he was that he was able to use it and do and kill all of Thanos's army and Thanos including himself. But my question is, like, do you think he would have not done it, or do you think it just wouldn't be successful of him getting the stones? If he mm. had known, if Doctor Strange told him what was going to happen, what he needed to do, do you think that he would have not done it and tried to find a different way, or do you think that because he knew it, he would be too focused on trying to do that, and re- and and because of that, since he was f- too focused, Thanos would have realized and maybe not have given him the chance to even take the gauntlet or take the stones from him? I have no idea. I think it was just kind of in the moment that he was just telling him, like, uh, you know, he didn't see anything, like, after he be the timeline they win, but if he's to add anything to the knowledge of that timeline, it could impact that one chance they had, so it's just better off not doing anything to let anything be known. Hmm. That's my thought, but what about you? Me? I I kept thinking about it, and it, it's, it's hard to come with a concrete answer, because, I mean, I think it's up to interpretation for anyone, but I think that Tony, knowing that, would have wanted to find a different way because he's very analytical. He he doesn't like going off emotions, um, and he 
and so he's, he's he's smart in that way um that's why like if you it kind of it kind of shows like what he did in avengers in the first one is he got the missile and his only he said the missile's coming i gotta go grab it and he didn't know what to do so he sent it back up there and but at that point he's like if i let go of this then i'm gonna die and but he accepted that um i think having a family now um might have changed his thought it was uh, maybe there's a different way maybe we if we cut his arm off or something like that yeah um, but being in that desperate situation and he's like he acted on impulse which again he doesn't really do much that because he did that um he was able to be successful in it and i think his death in the movie was such a it was a it's funny because it, it's I know this movie about superheroes, but it was a very realistic death in the sense that he didn't have any final words after he did the the snap, like he was out of it, he was gone, like he was just looking around, weary eyed, and that I think for me that impacted me more because it's like this is how a person would die after something that would take a toll on his life on his body that bad, and like I, he's lucky enough to have words come out of his mouth even like slightly, you know what I mean. Yeah, and so that was, and that's what made it hard. And I loved how they did that. They didn't give him any anything to say, like, like with like, for example, like they gave um, uh, what's the Quicksilver when he was in there? He had his lines like, "You did not see that coming," and he died. So I'm yeah. not saying it's it's not it's not bad, but it's kind of corny. It's kind of a cliche thing to happen. That was more superhero of a death, where this is more realistic death. Yeah, yeah. and but. and I absolutely love that. I mean, what was your what were you thinking? Like, a, did you think he would have he he would have died or that he was going to die in the movie? And be like, how did you respond to that death? Um, so it was to me from my pre- my other podcast. We were discussing one of the two people were going to die. It was either Cap or Iron Man. And so when I saw that the stones went on Iron Man's glove, I was like, okay, he's going to die. And, and I just didn't know how much it would in, impact me. Um, but it got me really hard because it, it's it's crazy because he ends it with with how he started being a hero. He 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 ended with I am Iron Man, and that's what the ending of Iron Man started with. Like see, basically him saying I'm a superhero. He said I am Iron Man. So mm-hmm. see, seeing how he ends it with the same lines he began his journey as as Iron Man is was like so nostalgic and then and then seeing what Pepper Potts was te- telling the Tony's like you can rest now because like. You know, like because of the earlier conversation he had with her in the beginning of movies, like he found out the how to go back in time through the quantum realm without having any real repercussions or like worrying about going in the past. And he's like, "Just tell me, and I'll throw this in the bottom of the lake, and I'll go to sleep." And she said, "But will you rest?" And then when she says, "It's okay, you can rest now. We'll be okay," and I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "What's going <laughs> on?" I was like, "Gonna cry." It was intense, but it was good. I liked it a lot. Okay, Milas. Uh, that scene really hit me hard. I was really thinking I'm gonna die, but when I saw um, Iron Man, yeah, do the do the snap. That was when I knew. But the scene was like you said, very realistic. Dude, that that one messed me up a little bit. I had a hard time. Um, kind of, it, it, it hit me in the same way of when Han died in The Force Awakens. It really mm-hmm. gave me that impact. And uh, one of those deaths where I kept thinking about it days after and i just saw it it really hurt me because i like the daughter you know him losing his daughter that he that he wanted and it's just i don't know that one just really hit me hard but i think they did it a very well job on that i liked how they did the um the carrying of his casket um for his death and all that but yeah i thought the death was really good i know we never really we only heard david's i mean diego's opinion on this but i i do need to give a shout out i actually did feel sad for black widow she's one of my favorite characters of the avengers personally but she didn't really get like a send-off much in the show besides just like you know hawkeye kind of mentioned about it and you know or mentioned it to get her back but you can't because it's soul stone but other than that i just thought the deaths were done very i guess well no iron man i thought his death was done well yeah and so let's let's talk about just the the final parts, the the send offs of of most of the Avengers or the original Avengers, um, the other, and some of the ones that are still going on that have contracts or whatever, uh, theirs were open ended and actually, for me like Hulk's supposed ending, was crap because he like they don't mention him much. He just is doing the <laughs> whole thing to bring to to have Captain return all the stones, but like. This is this thing. Iron Man had a great ending because he 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 died. 
having saved everyone and dying a, a, a real hero's death. Uh, we had Scarlet Witch who also sacrificed herself. Um, we had we had Hawkeye who got his family back. Um, wait, 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 Scarlet Witch sacrificed herself. I mean, sorry, Black Widow. My bad. Oh, Black like, Widow. Dude, you just broke my heart. <laughs> like, sorry, what Bla- did I miss? <laughs> no, Black Widow got you know, Black Widow was 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 killed and uh, you know sacrificed herself. Um, we had Captain America, which again we'll talk more later when we talk about all the endings to the to the to the original Avengers. He, um, he got to grow old and get married in another timeline which we'll talk about that again later um his was kind of eh to me that did just me personally and then um and then we have thor's which is a lot more open-ended and apparently he's not done because he's leaves with a gu- wait first of all i don't know why he leaves the the asgardians i thought that was a dick move we'll talk about it another time yeah but then he leaves with the guardians of the galaxy and it it sets up for guardians of the galaxy 3 because or we as have, guardians of the galaxy whatever whatever <laughs> Anyway, they end uh, they they end it with uh, it looks like uh, what's the um, Star Lord looking at the at uh, what's her name, uh, Gamora who's from the from the past. She stayed in that future, and uh, she just left. Uh, I guess it, uh, the assumption is she left somewhere because he's searching for her. So I'm thinking that Thor is. The people say there's a Thor four, but I'm also thinking that Thor is going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy three, and part Asgard. of. And part of that plot line is them finding Gamora and having her come back to the Guardians of the Galaxy or to introduce her to the Guardians of the Galaxy. But o- overall, the ending to, to these to these characters, just overall ending, um, how'd you feel? Did you feel a lot of them were like good uh, send-offs or a great closure to just the movie itself, not just necessarily the characters, but how did you feel about them? Because I, I honestly, think they were good. I think Scott, oh. Scott got the best ending because he got his his daughter back he's back with the wasp uh he's and the only one that aged was his daughter but i I think his ending was probably the 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 best one because he didn't he didn't have to like suffer for a long time about losing his family and he only i think i think he might lost his ex-wife and his friends but that's not like explicitly told to us we just know that his daughter survived uh, but I think his was his his he got the best ending, the happiest ending, um, in my opinion. But what about what about you guys? I know, I like I said, we'll talk about it more uh, in different videos. But how did you feel about all the other endings? Like uh, Miss Mister said, they were good. How about you, Miles? Um, does this mean I can like go on to Captain America or no? You can still talk to him. I mean, we'll go into more detail about his ending. But I guess I'll can... just shorten into that a little bit. I won't do much. I, I was just gonna say I I like the to uh. To, um, to go back and you know have a life with like you know Agent Carter and all that and have a life. Although there are some plot holes with that, uh, it was kind of cool. I, I like that send off where he passed down the shield. I didn't know who he was gonna give it to. I was actually rooting for Bucky. I but, don't um, think it should have gone to Sam, but that's just me. I, I yeah, that's just me too. I agree. I think Bucky deserved it. That's where we had the emotional connection between him and his best friend. So him you know, to pass over to Sam was a little weird. Whatever. Um, but again, you know, especially they, they, when they both oh, been Captain sorry. America, they both been Captain America yeah, in the in the, yeah. in the comic book. So I mean, it made sense. That it's just one of them because Bucky's more enhanced. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I kind of felt he should deserve it, especially with like he doesn't fly around and stuff. Quit with like hand to hand combat and working with Cap. I I just didn't get that. I mean, it's fine if Sam gets it. That's fine, whatever. But I feel Bucky deserves the trade off a lot more, just in aspect of character development and the overall years we've seen with those guys and the history and everything. But that was whatever. But I like that Cap was able to finally settle down. And you know, I think and I think part of that was the impact of. I, you know tony stark you know tell him like when are you gonna you know settle down and have this life and yeah. he's like no i'm home you know well then i think after tony dying he's like you know what i'm gonna take him up on that offer and go live my life and he did and uh regardless of weird plot holes we can talk in another video i thought that was a cool send-off for cap all right so overall rating for the movie endgame mr mr what's your overall rating out of 10 chibis uh 10 um I know you have issues with it. I have some issues with it too, but they're just so minuscule that it does, didn't bother me enough at all, really. Um, I knew that there was going to be issues with time stuff no matter what, so I just pushed that to the side. Um, so I'll give it a 10. Okay, Milas. You know, I've been contemplating on this uh, a lot, and some people are going to be mad at me for that. 
uh, when I look at some of these movies, I look at them as, can I go and rewatch this hundreds of times? Well, not hundreds, but realistically, can I watch it over and over again? This is one I don't really want to go back and watch in theaters. And the reason why I say that is knowing they have to deal about an hour, hour and 20 minutes of so much slowness of nothing happening puts me off. So, and that's just an opinion. So I'm sorry people are upset with that. I know people love it and that's great. I'm sorry. It was the second half that sold me, not the first. And I, even though I like the development, I got to knock off some points for that. I'm probably going to get a 7.8. What I'm sorry hell? if anybody doesn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the reason is, is because I know people are going to be mad and that's just i can't go and watching that movie again because i'd have to like go out get the blu-ray to skip through some of the just very slow hour and a half parts it just really i was my eyes were starting to douse down a little bit so i apologize but i gotta be realistic the second half was like the best marvel movie i've ever seen in my life i don't think you should so. apologize i'm just like i was like dang that's low but that's just and me. i give I... infinity i give infinity war a 9.9 <laughs> so, is it... whatever i don't know i'm sorry <laughs> no don't be sorry i just that's just weird. That's it's just a great movie. Me. I just got to dock off some... If I can't enjoy the first, like, hour or something out of a three-hour movie, I, I got to dock off some points if I got to skip through it. Just being realistic. Yeah, well, it's your opinion. That's that's all I got to go with it. Um, Still love mine, the movie, though. <laughs> mine... mine uh, I think it was all the points of just... They delivered on fan service. And sometimes maybe they were a little bit too fan service-y, but uh, to, the, uh, to the point they just put in there just because. Um, I did like how they focused on just the main six Avengers that it was their story to finish. And I think it was a, a almost near perfect ending. I get, I give this mm -hmm. one a 9.9 .9 out of 10. Good God. Okay. That, yeah, I, I actually would go see it again, but that again, that's just, that's I just, just don't want to go to theaters cause I want to pee. So I, I, I definitely <laughs> want to pause it. I just feel I could go and see it again and pee anytime within the first hour and a half. No, that's just that's me though. I like the setup. I'm I'm more no, of like fine. you need to build it up and then I can understand it more. Um, sure. I I won't go see it in theaters again because it's just I just don't want to go through that turmoil in my body. So I'd mm -hmm. rather just I'm definitely gonna buy it. So it's not a big deal on that part. So it's not nothing to worry about on my end. Okay, that's all good. Well, let us know what you thought about the movie. Hopefully, you stayed here for the full thirty, like thirty eight, thirty nine minutes. <laughs> and but let us know what you thought of the movie. Uh, if you think Miles is completely wrong, or if you think giving it a 10 is completely wrong too. Like, we want to hear both sides. Uh, just leave it in the comment section below. And thanks so much for listening. Uh, we love doing these reviews. This is David the Smash Fan. Miles, you're that guy. Mr. Mister. And this is Chibi No Podcast.